Okay, then hello and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for making the time today. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Quick introductions. This is Vineet, head of sales at Quintype. Hi, this is Ram uh, from Quintype. I'm taking care of solution and uh, migration in Quintype. Awesome. And uh, I, I guess today's topic or the, uh, you know, what we've chosen for the webinar series today is really a discussion around uh, digital first for print publishers. Um, I think it's about time we recognize that, you know, uh, uh, gone are the days where we're educating about how important digital is. Uh, everyone is on digital already. I would barely come across uh, you know, a publishing house or, or a news media organization uh, that doesn't have a digital footprint already. But I think we're now evolving into different journeys across these newsrooms where their, uh, you know, digital and traditional media are sort of coexisting. Um, and it comes to different, should I say, challenges or whether or not it's about time that digital really steps up and, and starts you know, uh, taking a majority share in the revenue game. So uh, between Ram and I, we happen to be in newsrooms uh, uh, speaking with, uh, you know, editorial teams across traditional media organizations, be it from the print side, broadcasting side, digital side. Uh, and we thought it would be nice to just share some insights on, you know, how do these conversations uh, shape around for us? Um, you know, uh, whether it is really the headache around two systems, uh, you know, having different systems, well, you know, one for print, one for uh, digital, managing both these systems, the people process content around it. Uh, um, and uh, I, I feel, you know, more so recognizing on the fact that, uh, you know, the landscape has started changing where, uh, you know, a lot of traditional media used to be the front runner uh, you know, in terms of revenue and, and how the organization was structured, uh, you know, we, you now have no boundaries or limitations with, with regards to digital, you know, whether it is space, whether it is depth, whether it is inventory, re online real estate that you could cash out on or different sort of business models that you could even look at. Um, but I think the inherent systems and, you know, different schools of thought that we are uh, coming from, or, or we, you know, land into discussions with classic use cases, you know, without uh, naming any publishers here is uh, legacy newsrooms that would have two completely different teams, two completely different functions that are running on, let's say, traditional print media versus, uh, you know, digital media, or uh, a more integrated sort of a newsroom integrated solution where there's overlap uh, in functions between what, uh, you know, a print team brings to the table or a digital team is working on. Um, whereas, uh, you know, or, or perhaps let's say a third set, which just has a different structure altogether. Maybe there is no classification between uh, a, a print and a digital team. But the question that we're trying to address over here is, is there a solution that happens to be a one size fits all? Because, you know, we're often landing into these conversations as to what are you doing on the print side or, you know, what are you doing on, on, the, on the broadcasting side? So I guess, Ram, the question is more for you since you happen to wear more of the solution technicality hat over here. So it will be interesting to hear, you know, what, what your thoughts are around uh, yes. you know, one, one size fits all integrated system. Thanks, Vinit. So yeah, so we've been meeting so many publishers um, in the past, <clears throat> uh, especially, you know, post-pandemic, probably we divide this into pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. The thing, the scenario is really changing after the pandemic. Um, uh, we've been talking to legacy publishers, uh, for that matter, who have been in the business for 40, 50 years now, who've been printing um, news day in, day out. Um, everyone is coming up with a huge team with multiple systems for managing their web, managing their print, um, and, and especially they're dealing with daily newspapers and of sorts. Um, they have been, you know, it's really, the scene is really chaotic. And we couldn't find one, one size fits all kind of solution till now, right? So, but we can suggest, or we can come up with, we can always optimize this flow, right? So you can have one system which 
seamlessly move data from one system to other system and then makes the whole journey easier can can it can be a it can be a digital cms it can be a print cms or any other system which can be a feeder to one to level it can be upstream and downstream and move on right but it cannot be one system a digital cms can never replace a prepress or a ad management systems or a layouting systems and all these things i think a majority of our or our audience also would agree with this because uh, i'm seeing quite a lot of uh, uh, you know people attendees from the publishing industry as well um so uh, the layout things and prepress are quite um uh, legacy systems where uh, uh, you know we need really uh, ensure that the data is flowing seamlessly to the system um feeding print to the web where we are seeing uh, in quite a lot of publishers saying that people take a feed from the print or a prepress kind of system and feed into the web um uh, that's i can i can confidently say that it's quite old school and i would say that in a lot of cases it doesn't scale <clears throat> uh, uh, it doesn't give quite there are quite a lot of advantages starting things from digital and then going to print right so that's what we are going to uh, we are going to discuss for the next 30 40 minutes um probably this debate can go on and on and on uh, having said that i want to stop this debate and and probably vinit i have a question for you uh, you've been meeting quite a lot of publishers uh, day in day out um um and and you must be seeing them using multiple systems their print data distribution and all the stuff what are the what are the top pain points that you heard from them could you could you touch upon those areas sure um so what essentially what I'm, i would say i've discovered in conversations uh, you know across newsrooms is definite there's definitely an inherent pain you know for looking at two systems now whether you look at it from a cost perspective whether you look at it from a time perspective whether you look at it from uh, you know an attrition perspective or or just retaining the talent perspective um first off is you know you definitely cannot neglect the traditional media because that's really been the cash cow i mean i talk talk to publishers who say that um listen all said and done the organizations been there for dozens of years you know decades of experience uh, there's traditional media that hasn't changed uh, you know there's this whole sham about start startups bubbling up and dying down um but uh, uh, you know 70% of the revenue comes from print that's really the cash cow that's really the foundation of the business so give giving that a little bit of a back seat or looking at something with a completely digital first pr perspective you know doesn't uh, naturally make sense right so um that essentially reboots them to saying okay let's just look at an alternate team and alternate system so not only are you adding to the cost of maintenance right uh, your but your system is more of an extension or an afterthought of your traditional media um you know if 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 that's the found, that's where the foundation is that's where it's 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 stemming from um besides the fact that there are more enough and more pain points around say uh, you know if if you were going to move from one system to another let's say you're moving from a print system to a digital system or vice versa uh, there's just a lot of that fear of migration right your your content system at a publishing house is like um, uh, you know a spinal surgery so you will not get into it unless you're in excruciating pain um so that being said you know combine that with the time and effort that it's going to take you know the talent we see uh is diminishing because uh you know fast moving talent is uh you know going to be more towards uh, you know the tech industry not really stay at uh, you know publishing houses or uh, uh let's just say there's a lot of this attrition we deal with the attrition on the technical side itself so it's just but natural that it's also a challenge that the publishing houses are are dealing with so i would say broadly it would be around uh, uh these three basic pain points that uh you know happen to come in from a business perspective but i'm just going to spin the bottle ram and going to you know point it towards you and saying okay wh where do you feel it comes in from a technical perspective what challenges do you feel we're hitting from a technical perspective because um you know as you as as we say there's still that two two or three schools of thought 
Uh, yes, yes. So uh, at least what we are seeing, um, um, what we are seeing with the publishers, there are two main problems I'm seeing, right, from the tech side, or rather one from the tech side, one from the ground operations side, the ground reality. Double posting, uh, we have seen double posting in quite a lot of publishers, uh, especially legacy publishers. Uh, say there's a print team, there's a web team. Uh, generally, if it is dealing with newspapers kind of uh, uh, business, the, the print team is huge. So whenever there is a breaking news coming and they start developing these stories separately as two different teams. Uh, sometimes the, the same article is getting developed in by the both the streams and so on. Uh, and, and, and probably bureau chiefs and editorials will be coordinating these two problems and try to coordinate between the two, becoming really a big problem. Um, there are some publishers who have solved this problem by feeding data from print to digital. Um, they still want to drive things from, you know, the, the, the major driver is actually the print guy. And he writes it, breaks it there. And it's going to be sent to the press that night and then be available in the market the next day. But just because they have a digital team, they'll keep feeding that back to the dev and then they will be breaking that here. And, and, and it's, it's quite a mess. And the tech issues involved in moving data from one system to other system goes unmanageable uh, uh, sometimes, right? So because it may not be glowing, it, it, it will not be like properly developed. Uh, digital can have a lot more benefits and a lot more options to present the content in, in, in a very rich, read media rich uh, uh, way of presenting, right? Could be a JSON, what could be a video, could be a uh, different kinds of media elements and all this stuff, which will not be there from the print. So people have to take it. You know, decorate it and then present it to stuff. And 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 that I can go on and on on that uh, tech part. Probably we'll cover that a little later in our conversation. Uh, but uh, ha having discussed on the business and the tech side pain points of breaking it the print first, probably I wanted to talk about uh, some kind of object. I'm sure that we have done. We both together have done a lot of digital transformations to quite a lot of publishers, right? Now, what are the common pushbacks or objections? Not necessarily, uh, it's a pseudo objection, right? It can be really, really real problems out there. So what are the common objections or challenges that you've been seeing in it? Um, uh, probably I will also add on the tech part once you give it, but I want to you know, understand from the business side of it, operation side of it from you, Vinit. Sure, sure. I, I think that's a very valid question. And I'm just going to harken back to the same concept, right? It's traditional media that's driving the revenue. That is the cash cow. So they have the say, or there's a foundation of how the business has been running, right? For so many years, there's a certain process. There's a method to the madness, as they say, right? So um, in many ways, you know, when we've identified a relationship like that, you know, it's, it's more of a, uh, you know, print plays the big brother, uh, in the relationship, right? So a lot of the vetting that has to happen would happen at the print level before deciding that a story could really be published um, on digital and actually digital before it goes to print, right? Now we we'll get to the story of what are the benefits or you know why does it make sense to put it digital first and, and print second? And I think that's baked into our conversation uh, over the next few minutes. But I think... Uh, the long-standing practices uh, is something that come in the way um, very often on, um, you know, how content needs to uh, uh, come out. I would just put it in a simple example is that today the audience has changed a lot, right? You, while you definitely have your audiences from the traditional media, but today uh, technology has made audiences adapt to newer forms of consumption, right? Whether it comes like a reel um, on your smartphone, whether it comes like an amp story, instant article, whether, you know, it's part of your social media feeds, it's, it's uh, you know, on aggregators. So there's different ways how your audience is consuming content. And I think how it's changing for uh, content creators or, um, um, is that you know you're not bound so you know, when you're creating content you're you're creating content it should not be classified as 
oh, this is a print content, this is a digital content, this is, you know, an audio content, or so on and so forth. But uh, you give that freedom, flexibility to the writer on, um, you know, where, you know, how the content is coming together, which is not there right now, because it is coming from these traditional forms, right? It says that, okay, here's a print team that is essentially going to write print pieces. Here's a digital team that's going to essentially do a lot of social media, multimedia, and write digital pieces. Um, and then there is just this back and forth between both teams on whether it's actually right, whether it's the most updated version of the story before it's actually hitting, uh, 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 you know, the public or hitting or being published per se, right? So um, I think that just makes that flow a lot more inefficient um, in in terms of uh, uh, you know the general challenges or objections that we would come across right uh, another point to say is different teams follow different ways so there is a different workflow a different process that will be followed at digital there'll be a different process that's followed at print and a lot of times it's very difficult to draw parallels between you know why it cannot be one process that follows for any form of content, right? So no the, one would want to, you know, no one really wanted to disturb the existing flow, which is actually working for so many years. Exactly. Well, you know, they say if it's not broken, you should not fix it. And you know, if it's if it's been working for the last 20 years, that doesn't mean it's going to work the same way for the next 20 years. Exactly. Um, uh, so one, the tech side of it, right? Um, I really wanted to add a point saying <clears throat> uh, we have solved this problem with a few of the publishers, which I wanted to quote, to quote here, right? Um, be it migration, be it uh, an efficient workflow, which which is actually actually not disturbing the existing flow, what is running. We can always, so what we have done is for a few of our legacy publishers, we, we customize the workflow um, in such a way that the, the flow is not disturbed, even though they're moving from one system to the system or they're making the entire workflow the other way, upside down. All these days it's print, now start with digital. That necessarily doesn't disturb the whole flow, but optimize and then enhance and optimize the whole experience. How the data flows, how quickly the data news is broken, um, uh, how seamlessly it goes to the press and all the stuff. Uh, um, by, by creating multiple workflows, automatic migrations, um, tagging and topic uh, topic uh, adding metadata to the stories kind of features we have done that technically uh, 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 in terms of the CMS solution. Uh, uh, probably we should should dig a little bit more on uh, uh, what would be the best way or optimal way to do that is what I would I would want to uh, uh, cover a bit uh, with it. So probably I wanted to cover probably let's break this into two three pieces. Let's deep dive into this right. Uh, I think, so, yeah, what, what you know what we've been. Uh, we've been able to structure so far is, okay, these are some challenges, these are some pain points, here's the problem statement that we're looking at. But now if we wanted to, uh, uh, you know, look at the, the some of the publishers or, you know, how use cases we come across where it's turning out to be successful or suggestions where you think, you know, on the process side, on the people side, on the technical side, uh, could be some best practices that could, um, uh, you know, kind of aligned to making sure that, you know, these challenges or pain points are really taken care of when a publisher is really looking at digital transformation as a pro project, right? And typically talking about a use case of a legacy publisher who's already had a footprint, you know, let's say a magazine that's been running for several years or, you know, a print newspaper or, uh, you know, some form of traditional media that's uh, taken precedence over earlier. So what right. would be your recommendations around process, people, technology? Sure. Um, I, th I think before we even touching that point, I'm just remembering uh, uh, one publish one scenario from a publisher we, what we recently see. Even though we call it as digital transformation has happened um, or have been happening the past 10 years now, um, uh, quite a lot of places, I, I would call that as a pseudo digital transformation which has happened. Um, which means 80% of the things would be automated and digitally done. And that is a 20-25%, good 20-25%. It's a meaty thing on a, on a news, newsroom. It's neat. It's really chaotic. And, and, and even a smallest error, smallest mistake in that, that depending 25% manual job is going, is actually toppling up the whole thing. 
and and it slows down sometimes slows down the daily press uh, uh, things also having said that uh, the cms or any tools not only the cms right any tools workflows which a publisher should be looking uh, should be very intuitive and very mm -hmm. much usable to the content creators the reporters um, whatever you said and done on the tech part content is the king and 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 if the content writer is not able to write or use the cms and its features easily uh, then it is actually hitting the purpose the cms needs to be very intuitive uh, as simple as possible uh, and it shows there are they in the workflow chain. Uh, probably to, to keep telling saying that this is now it's in an adapt state. Now I need another two steps to go and make this story live or it's going to be sent to print and so on. Um, it should be like break the news faster, write a line, publish it with one or two clicks, it should be live. And and in, in case of breaking news and, and others, right? Probably someone else will take that story and then develop it in a bigger one. Um, and, and the system should help in all these things. Security is going to be a very big thing, right? Now, what is the point if the system is not so confidential? It's going to, you know, people are going to, you know, hack it in and then get all the, the story, right? We, we really don't want to do that. That's the last thing any newsroom wanted to have. Uh, it should be completely secure, uh, be it the DAM, digital assets manager, or the content manager side of it, or the, the request going front and back within the CMS system needs to be extremely secure. And of course, the last, not the least, it has to be scalable. Right? So uh, uh, if a, a legacy publisher who's breaking a news or breaking an article, which is viral of sorts, she should not be sitting and worrying about whether the system can scale up or not. It should auto scale. And you should not be really, the last thing a publisher should be worrying is if it auto, if there's a viral story and it auto scales the system, am I going, is it going to put a big hole in my pocket or not? That's the last thing you should be worried. I mean, you should be worried about the content, how quick he breaks up the, uh, then the CMS systems and the, the, the underhood technology should take care of all these things and it should abstract as much as it can from the newsroom people. Um, um, uh, so that's something which I would say on the tool side. Uh, uh, probably, I'm sure that you have a lot more experience on the people side. Do you want to add anything on the people side? Um, on, on the people perspective, I, I would say that, you know, uh, and I think I brushed upon it a little bit earlier, is, is really when we're looking at the profile, it, you cannot classify or you, I guess where it's going towards is, you know, you shouldn't be classifying someone as, you know, writing only for print or writing only for one medium or one channel or so. The content should come together as naturally as possible and, uh, uh, you know, uh, without any bounds, limitations to it, with a combination right. of all forms, whether it's, you know, text, audio, video, multimedia, uh, uh, you know, wh wh whatever adds to the richness of the content, um, as you said. Uh, so that comes just from uh, a writer building that content. Um, you know, that would be one recommendation. Um, and then to be able to restructure with, uh, perhaps more specialized. So what I'm saying is the role of the editor gets a little bit wider in terms of slicing and dicing that content or other teams that are slicing and dicing that content for different platforms. So uh, it's right. a plus plus exercise on a content, right? Whether it's to do with the SEO and the tags and the keywords, whether it's to do with the bundling and subscriptions, whether it's to do with uh, uh, you know, pushing it on different channels, be it a newsletter, be it social media, be it, um, you know, the website, the app, um, or, or even push notifications for that matter. So, so you would have smaller teams that are specialized in platforms and, you know, more from an editorial side, slicing, dicing that same content to be available to the audience that likes consuming it a certain way. Um, um, so, so that's perhaps, uh, uh, you know, one and then, of course, the ability to, you know, because adapt to these newer ways of storytelling. I think in a sense, what I'm trying to say is uh, when we're looking at omni-channel content distribution, then there is no point in classifying the content to be one yeah. particular category. So the reporters are no more, or the reporters or the content writers themselves are no more classified as um, I'm a... I'm a print reporter, content creator meant for print or content creator meant for digital. Those days are really gone. I mean, right? That's what you're trying to say. More of a form agnostic 
the media agnostic reporting is the is the new age um, uh, reporting, right, Vinay? Absolutely, I think you got it bang on over there. Um, um, you know, I I think uh, what about from a process perspective? Maybe we will just I know we're inching over the thirty minute mark by now, so we'll probably have uh, a couple more dis, you know points to discuss. What what are your thoughts around the process perspective, Rob? Uh, so uh, one biggest debate which we've been uh, talking to publishers is the workflow, right? So um, um, I would say that a lot of whenever we so multiple occurrences uh, with some of uh, with legacy publishers. I mean, I'm not really talking about digital only publishers or a small publisher uh, for that matter, or legacy publishers who have multiple systems to manage. Everyone is trying to lean towards multiple branches of workflows. You know, um, I will start start putting a content. Give me options like let it go to one branch goes to print, one branch goes to digital. Uh, maintain parallel branches of the same article. Uh, can it take uh, version number one and then switch it to print and vice versa and all the stuff. Um, um, our at least I have been telling to people for a long time, uh, multiple or parallel branches are going to create a lot more confusion. And my recommendation is always a linear workflow. Um, uh, let it be linear. It can have customized stages, multiple stages. Probably we can have as many stages as they wanted. Probably a, a probably a proofread stage, probably a, a preview stage, and so on. In between, one stage can feed or power up press prepress kind of system. But the best approach is a linear flow. I would say um, when I say linear flow, uh, everyone logs into one system. Start writing the content. Once the content creator uh, is done with this, this stuff, he's going to put it to an editorial, and an editorial is going to decide whether the story is a good is a good to print or good to go to uh, web or let it go to both the stories or let it break into press first or break into digital first. Let someone else decide all these things, but let it happen. All these things happen in one system, and let it happen linearly, right? And 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 and, and very very less percentage we are seeing in terms of less use cases, in terms of print exclusive stories first. Let it go to print first, hold on, don't uh, uh, break into web until it breaks out to print. That probability is keep on reducing, right? And not, uh, yeah, we heard this scenario probably four or five years back uh, quite a lot, but nowadays that has is being, you know, being challenged and, and keep on reducing. Uh, uh, having said this, I really want to touch upon one key thing so which is the main thing as well uh, do you think uh, uh, since you were representing the business side of this really do you think that there is a monetization side for this uh, do you think publishers can have a positive impact in terms of revenue monetization side if they break into digital first if they write in digital first money questions are always the best <laughs> Right. No. So I, I, um, I, I think Ram, we, we can both testify to the fact. In fact, we've got right. live examples right. when uh, we've been proven wrong. We, you don't need to be a hundred million page views publisher to be able to make, uh, uh, you know, good revenue on the di digital side. Um, you know, although it's traditionally been with the ads, but the ad rates are plummeting. We know, you know, although digital shifts have spent, there's a majority of it going to um, certain organizations. Um, uh, but uh, I think there are what we're discovering is new models um, that have uh, started to take precedence, right? Even a publisher with, uh, you know, a much, much smaller audience under 10 million, under 5 million, uh, in, in terms of, you know, monthly page views or monthly traffic are being able to make a significant amount of money, um, you know, just by being creative with their monetization strategies. Now, we definitely saw a few years ago with how things were, uh, uh, you know, uh, being audiences being receptive towards subscriptions and subscription models and subscription groups and plans. Uh, but then subscriptions have evolved into memberships for those that, you know, uh, were not wanting to classify just based on niche content, but also be able to add additional benefits, create more communities or, uh, you know, um, deeper relationship with their audience, you know, through membership plans. We've seen 
potential publishers experiment with investigative journalism, fundraising, right. you've seen, right. uh, uh, you know, models like paper story, paper article, uh, uh, you know, or we uh, essentially come across, um, uh, you know, different sort of ways, um, uh, you know, how a publisher uh, gets to make money off of, uh, you know, even a smaller traffic. And I feel that more and more of these models, uh, you know, we'll start discovering. We know advertisers are getting very demanding where not only has the spend shifted more on digital, but with that shift in spend, where you didn't really know who's the person reading the newspaper, you can tell a lot about the person reading that same article online you know, whether it's the, uh, uh, you know, geographical alignment, whether it's, you know, the age graphs and, you know, the advertisers tend to demand newsrooms around, okay, what profile of audience do you have? Is it something that we can cater a premium product to? Uh, so I think, uh, you know, it will lead to a lot more evolving, uh, uh, you know, creative business models. Um, Having said that, uh, I really want to add a point here, Vinit. So um, when you said creative uh, ways of monetization, right? Um, uh, very recently, I've been uh, talking to one of a legacy publisher who's been in the print business for 80, 90 years. Um, he, he is actually rethinking the way um, the digital workflow, what he has been following. Um, they are questioning, I was really surprised when they questioned saying that, yes, Squid Type and other famous folks are offering uh, magazines issues as a feature in the CMS, but does it really make sense to have a structure called magazines and issues uh, in in you know in, in the digital way of when 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 I decided to break news into digital when I decided to break my content into digital first do I really need to follow the legacy ways of bundling uh, I'm thinking of probably cutting out um, uh, um, you know probably tomorrow morning I come and say that. I wanted to curate a magazine or, or a group, a bundle, which is based on certain attributes. Get me all the stories, which is on, on certain personality. Get me all the articles, which is, I have articles for the last 50 years in the digital CMS. So now I have the freedom to curate however I want. How about me opening up a new bundle and then open it for subscription, opening for, for, for monetization so that I can start selling this bundle for X amount of, um, um, you know, uh, 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 they don't for, for a certain cost and then keep selling it. I was really surprised this kind of answers from a legacy publisher. I didn't really understand last five, six years, they have got a lot of digital publishers. They started in digital market and they never been in different business. They're only digital publishing existence. But these kind of people are changing uh, towards very creative way of monetization. Um, also, uh, we have one legacy publisher who's, who's do, who has done a full round of automation. Um, start from digital, send it to print, whatever print connections are there, they automatically comes back and then sits into the digital CMS as well and, and vice versa. So the, the entire content team is actually talk, working on one system, which is the CMS system, whereas it keeps sending towards everywhere, it takes feedback, you know, flows back into the system as well. So that kind of 360 degree uh, data flow has also been happening. And also people start selling slice and dice, like rightly said that they slice and dice their data. There was a health and wellness publisher who was actually slicing and then say that take diabetics related, diabetic related articles and then sell it as a bundle. Take diet and, and health and diet kind of articles, sell it as a separate bundle for a lower cost. And he was able to realize a lot more revenue than, um, um, you know, selling the whole content as one or zero model, like, you know, three month subscription, six month subscription kind of model. So exactly. that, in that way, people are changing and, and newer monetization, there is a positive impact on the digital, breaking things into digital same as I can say. Uh, uh, on that note, I think uh, uh, I really want to touch upon one area, which, which, which I would say that would be a, a good use case to discuss here, I guess. Uh, the future, right? So all whatever we spoke of, we were already there. Uh, and, 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 and future is really promising in this area, right? Now, um, in terms of in this trend, what is what is the future? Uh, uh, how much of these items needs to be pivoted if some publisher needs to go digital first? Um, uh, do you want to touch up some areas on that minute? Um, so I, I think, uh, um, 
you know, where it's going in terms about, uh, uh, you know, while we understand, we discover these new revenue models, but where it's going towards is, you know, a little bit on the audience, on the publishers getting to know their audience a lot more. You know, as I said, it's um, instead of spraying bullets, there's a lot of aim and fire strategy on ad models, right? Just from impressions, it went to clicks and then from clicks, it went to conversions, right? So it's a lot more targeted in terms of you know, publishers getting to know who their audience are, right? right. Um, where in terms of a, a leg legacy publisher, traditional media, you know, you would talk about, uh, you know, a reputed newspaper that has a great circulation, uh, you know, and it reaches different locations. But here it's right. more around, are you able to profile high net worth individuals that could be targeted uh, the ad for a luxury product, right? Maybe a new right. car launch of sorts, right? Or let's say, could you uh, uh, segment or micro segment your audiences into uh, say uh, age, uh, age gaps or, um, you know, could be something that are more preferred with a certain segment of say geo-targeting. I mean, classic example, and you know, we have this Bangalore office and I think is the IKEA ad, right? The IKEA ad example, or someone who's landing into Bangalore, coming in Bangalore, essentially wants to see the IKEA ad on, on uh, you know, from a certain profile, from a certain genre. Um, so that, that sort of demand is something what we're realizing and, and publishers spending more and more time in understanding who their audience is, whether it's by, you know, uh, um, taking permissions, being able to personalize the content from them. And I think that's where I'm alluding to the technical side of it, where you guys, you know, products usually come in to engage with the audiences. So essentially one of the reasons for going digital first is the predictability that it's offering in terms of, you know, what could work on, on print or, you know, could you make, your experience a lot more engaging with your recommendations uh, and allowing the user to share a little bit more about themselves, about their interest. Absolutely. Um, I think that answers uh, to one of the questions in the in the chat box. Um, I would request the attendees to put their questions in the chat. Uh, probably we will take it at the end of the session almost. I think we are nearing the end of the session. Uh, but last but not the least, I really want to talk about um, uh, some of the asks, futuristic asks, I would say. Um, um, I think people more, the, the readers are demanding more and more things. Um, uh, people would want to have a personalized homepage or landing pages in digital, uh, I mean, of course. Um, say, if someone wanted to say that, get me all the stories, geotag stories, right? The top section of my homepage should always be um, the stories from, uh, from the area, ge geography, what I'm interested from. Um, um, you know, the, my first row should be always a uh, sports section for me and second section should be politics section. And that also should show only articles of my preference of area or of geography. Uh, those kind of personalization uh, is, is something which I'm seeing um, in the future. Uh, um, I think people start asking such things already. From the publisher's side, they also wanted to recommend articles based on certain things. They also wanted to have uh, deliver hyper local content. Um, sponsor articles of the hyper local uh, way. Um, say, say there is a new IKEA store nearby, and then that can be a articles related to that. Can be sponsored articles around that, and do it only in a certain city or a certain town, and so on. So those kind of asks are coming up. Um, that's something which I'm seeing in the future. Um, I think people have gone one step ahead, and then and then there are a lot of reward points and and revenues are being generated among the users themselves. There are a lot of marketplace kind of things that are happening on the users themselves. Um, uh, so more the user spending time with the page, the page, the session time per, per page is gonna keep going so that the public is also happy. The, it is a win-win situation, I would say. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a, it's, a, it's a way of maximizing the user timing on the, on the ecosystem, on the platform. Um, having said that, I'm seeing um, uh, one question in the, in the chat window. I think we need you just answer. Uh, is there a way that 
um, you know, people, it does make sense to see the trend of how the digital story is doing and then do changes to the print. Um, that's what exactly Vinod was also telling. So, um, you know, you can always break the story in digital first. You would have got an idea of how um, the story has been consumed, um, how well uh, it's going viral, or it's just a ton of the breaking news, or, or how this story needs to be developed further, and then that can go into print. Uh, the audience are different again, right? So how many people are actually buying newspaper, waiting for the newspaper to come and then read it? Uh, that audience is different, but you can always get a taste of how the article has been consumed and then and then you can always make changes to the print. Yes, that can be done. So in um, many ways, digital could help uh, better curation for that's right. what's going to be printed the next morning. You know, exactly. Data-driven insights that you know, analytics could help you with. Exactly. I, th I think uh, we answered the second one as well, um, you know, the adoption of digital first and tech trends around the years to come. Um, the future is going to be recommendations and personalizations of, of um, uh, digital. The plain digital is at least 10 years old now. Now the future is going to be a lot more than recommendations, a lot more recommendations coming into picture. How well you can customize my home page based on the needs. Um, um, I, I'm also, I, I think it, it's also, um, th there needs to be a well, um, um, I would say, debated uh, a decision among the publishers uh, how they want to design the recommendation. Recommendation can be a double edged sword, uh, it, it can be a cost crunching, cross, uh, you know, uh, money, uh, it can put a big hole in the pocket. Uh, how much data you wanted to crunch, how many data you wanted to do mining, all these things needs to be a very conscious call. But uh, uh, I think to start with, or, or I would say that at least next two, three years, I'm seeing a lot of recommendations around geotagging, a lot of recommendation on home page representation and so on. Um, now there are a few, few ads which I have heard saying that, you know, can wherever I go based on the geography, can, can I get stories? Uh, I think that's a kind of overkill at the moment because it's going to be too chaotic on the experience, but, but that uh, uh, call can always be a well-thought call. Um, I think we answered pretty much all these things. Do you want to add anything on this recommendation side? Um, um, no, I, I think you've got uh, everything covered. As always, great conversation, Ram. I wish we could do it more often. And, you know, it's great to have it, uh, uh, you know, people listening in. We would welcome, you know, more such questions. It just helps everyone in the grand scheme of things. Uh, so even if, uh, you know, you're unable to put something on the chat right now, uh, feel free to email it over to us and uh, we hope uh, it was uh, helpful and informative. Exactly. And, and on the same place, if any, any of your publishers, any of the attendees out there want to talk about or, or having a different views on digital first or print first, we are very happy to talk about that. And then we've been doing this day in, day out. Uh, we would be very much delighted to talk to, you, to anyone of you on that, that note.